Hello everybody, Six Man, small van driver on the CX, this is my week in the life, it's actually Friday afternoon, quarter past four, uh, day off today, uh, explain why in a minute, um, this is week commencing normally Monday the 26th it would be, but in fact it was Sunday the 25th, the reason being I'd picked a load up on Friday uh, the 23rd, from near where I lived, and it got to go to Liscard in uh, near Plymouth, ten miles in the side of Plymouth, and it had to be there Monday morning at eight thirty, nine o'clock at the latest. And I went and picked it up Friday, and I'd sort of made the decision if it was small enough so I could tramp. I was going to tramp, go down Sunday night and tramp, and it was. It was three uh, cases, two metal, small metal cases, and a larger plastic case with measuring equipment in from a company uh, who was down in Liscard, who uh, hired it out for someone, I suppose. So, on the 25th, Sunday the 25th, I travelled down to Liscard. I left about 6 o'clock at night, Sunday evening. Took me best part of five and a bit hours, because I stopped just in the side of Bristol, grabbed a coffee, a little chill out, and set my bed. I got the bed set up anyway, in the back, next to the uh, three boxes, they were on one side, I would have been the other, and um, parked up, I was going to decide how far I was going to go really, but I decided just to keep driving, and I wanted to get over Plymouth, Saltash Bridge, I didn't want to do it in the morning when the rush hour traffic was, so kept going straight over, and I parked just outside Liscard in a really nice lay-by, when I say nice lay-by, it was off a dual carriageway, a good bit off, and there was toilets, it was a uh, uh, walk it for walkers and there was a cafe there obviously not open at that time of night so got there sunday night set the bed i've got the bed set up straight at the back asleep slept really well woke up monday uh woke up early monday about 6 30 and i've got two miles to do to get to this place so i was there on, on site it didn't open till 8 and it said 8 30 so Packed my sleeping bag away, didn't get out of the van, there was a note the side door of the van, and it's one of them things that you just love. The smell of bacon. Oh. Open the van doors, the smell of bacon. The cafe was open. She'd opened up at half six, I didn't know, and there was only me and another van in the in the whole A boy. Oh, lush. And also with the toilets being there, free toilets, brilliant. So I I Got the kit ready, had a quick wash, shave, and when I got myself bacon sausage sandwich, which I have to say was lovely. I couldn't tell you the name of the place. Can't remember the name of the place, but lovely. <clears throat> anyway, it's the title of the video is is taking risks. And the risk is you're in Plymouth, uh, well, Liscard, and you may not get any work out of there because it's pretty hard to get work out of Liscard. I delivered the Liscard one, that was easy, simple. Uh, I've delivered it about 20 past 8 and I decided I was going to drive to Plymouth which is 14 miles there was no vehicles in this car there were no vehicles within 20 miles really Plymouth had a couple of uh, long wheelbase vans and there was two vans that were on red when they hadn't started the day but there was four vans in total and there was a couple of other vans Newton Abbott which were big vans and there was a couple of others north but it was pretty dead which works two ways means there's no work there that's why they don't bother staying there or when the work comes in there's a good chance you might get it and i waited and i ended up getting a job at a torquay it was about i was going to say it's about up as 10 11 o'clock up as 10 about two two and a quarter hours something like that two hours and there was a job popped up torquay to hamble which is a district of southampton um and I've quoted on it, quoted pretty good money, and got it. And it was two wooden crates. And um, when I picked them up, I had 20 odd miles to get to there, but I was out. I was away from the area and I got a job. So happy days, really. Got to Hamble, uh, right on the right on the seafront, uh, Hamble was. It, literally, the industrial estate was literally 50 yards from the gravel uh, beach thing. So I delivered that. I think mean, it was afternoon, it was about three o'clock, probably early in that, up as two, I'd say up as two, three o'clock, and I decided that's probably going to be it for the day, but I've done really well, with the job going down, 
and this job going to Southampton, I'd had a cracking day. So I weren't fussed, we didn't get anything else. I thought, you know what, that was probably it for the day. I went to a Tesco to get some grub and I get some fuel. And I was sitting in Tesco and my phone went and it was someone who does private work. I do private work for now and again. She's not a brilliant payer, but I'd had all the money from her. Uh, you know, I'm like the late payers. Can't just, just boil my, let my blood boil. Um, you know, you do the job, pay on time. And she was after a job and I says, do you know what? I don't know whether I, I don't want to do a long job. I've, I've been on the go all day. I just, I'm happy where I am. She said she needed three uh, items picking up and they were Southampton, Totten and Twyford. It's about 15 mile round trip. And she, could I get them to round them services on the M27 and a driver would take them off me and take them into London. She offered me the job into London if I wanted. And I went, no, I don't want it. Because you end up in Slough, right by Heathrow. And I didn't want it. I didn't, in fact, I didn't really want her job. And I says, she said, well, I said, I normally quite a pound a mile with her straight and then a fiver a drop. I went, you know what? I, it ain't worth my while. So I, she said, what about if I offered you 40 quid? I went, no, not interested. I went, I'll tell you what, you offered me 50 quid and I'll do it. But put it on WhatsApp because she didn't do it from the six. And then I'll invoice you when I get home and you can sort it out. I says, because you, I says, the reason is you don't pay on time. And then she went into some rant where, Oh, her, her customer ain't paying her. I don't give a shit. I really don't. I'm doing your job on time. I don't care, care about your customer. You sort them out. That's your problem. So 50 quid was agreed. And it, it was easy. I mean, it's easy. It was easy 50 quid. I will get the money. Yeah, she will not pay. She dare not, not pay me. Put it that way. And so I've got a really good day then. I'm both still in Southampton. And I was going to go to the services anyway to get a shower in Southampton. Which... I had to wait for their driver who was coming up from Bournemouth. Uh, he was taking the stuff onto London. Uh, he phoned me. It was going to be about 30 minutes. And I thought, well, I'll let him get here. I'll get the stuff off. It's about six, it's half six. He was going to get there about half six. I mean, it was about six o'clock. And I thought, I'll just wait for him. And I'll get a shower after he's gone. But before he got there, a job popped up. Another job popped up. Never thought this would happen. And it was Andover to Chipping Norton to Brackley. I'd already spoke to my wife saying I wouldn't be home that night. And I thought, you know what? I feel all right. I thought, and it was pick up at nine o'clock. So I weren't going to get home until gone midnight. But I thought, you know what? I'll be in my own bed. And I knew what it was because it's the Formula One Alpine at Chipping Norton and it's Mercedes. I've done it. And I thought, yeah, sounds good. I thought, I'll put a boat quote in. I quoted uh, a good amount and see if i get it and i did i got a phone call saying you know it's not till nine o'clock to pick up you may be able to pick it up quarter to nine and i said yeah that's fine so i've got loads of time i thought well i haven't got a shower now i'll, I'll wait to get home so the, i got rid of the other three parcels he turned up really nice bloke he's on the cx he's in solly hill didn't catch his name oh did rudy um i don't know what company it is but really nice bloke and um, we had a chat for about five minutes ten minutes and off he trotted, off I trotted. And I went up to Andover. I went and got some grub. And I got a coffee. Uh, I was well early. I was well early. Andover's not that far. <clears throat> anyway, I went to this company. It is pitch black. Absolutely pitch black in this industrial estate. Little engineering company. I got there about 20 to 9. I thought, I'll try my luck. Uh, backed up to the door. There was a light on. A couple of guys within there working. But the rest of the industrial estate was dead. And... I backed up to the door and the bloke come and he went, yes, mate. I went, uh, I'm from who I was working for. I got a pickup, two pickups, Chippy Norton and uh, Brackley. And he went, hey, look, you, you know, when they got that look, the look is, I don't know. He went, I'll have to find the boss. He said, he says, there's only us two here and we don't know. I said, okay, I'll wait. I said, I'm early anyway. I, I did explain. I said, look, I'm early. I'm not due to pick up till nine. It's 20 to 9. I says, you know, no problem. And he come back to me. He spoke to this boss. And apparently the stuff that was going is not, now not going. And I went, are you sure? He says, yeah, because the person here who's going to be packing it and labelling it, it's precise stuff. It has to be done by them. They're not here. They're, they've not, they're not here today. We've got to cancel it. You, you're cancelled, mate. So I'm really sorry. 
I went, okay. Now, you get a council job every... This is a way to do a council job. I'm not saying I know everything, but I know how to do a council job. Phone the shipper up. Don't leave sight. Don't leave the site. Explain to the bloke. Uh, the bloke who's cancelled it there, I asked for his... Could he give us his name? I wrote it down, so I, I've got a name there. I phoned the shipper. Nice lady answered the phone. I told her what had happened, and she says, can I get back to you? I'll, I'll just give someone a ring, the customer. I'll come back to you. I went, yep, I'll stay on site. Stayed on site and was chatting with the bloke, really nice guy. And then the phone went and it was the, sh uh, the shipper who said, yeah, it's been cancelled. Really sorry. Um, messed you around. I said, well, at least we know it's cancelled. And she says, because it's the time of the night, nine o'clock at night, it was getting you home. And I won't name the shipper. I don't know shippers, but she paid me the full amount, which... Okay, it's late at night. I waited an hour and a half. I travelled a little bit away, but I still thought that was pretty good to pay the full amount. A big shipper as well. Big shipper. I've always been really happy with the work I do for them. They pay on time. Um, and, yeah, I know it's late at night. And I know I was going to ask for more than 30 quid, 25 quid. I was probably going to ask for 40 quid, but she paid the full amount. And I thought, do you know what? With that amount, I'm going to drive home. I didn't have to. I could have stayed in Andover. And I've got like 70 mile drive, uh, but I drive home. I thought, you know what, I fancy being in my own bed. So I thought, we go, drive home. And, and that was a massive day, a massive day in money. It was nearly two and a half days worth money, just a bit. It was two and a half days money, over two and a half days money in one day. But I, the Sunday I counted as Monday. So, cracking Monday, Sunday. So I was at home, uh, I got home about 10.30 at night. Uh, and I've been on the go since 8 o'clock, so it was 14 and a half hours, but it was well worth it, money-wise. Then, Tuesday, I picked a job up, small job, uh, Northampton to Whitney in Oxford, which can be a bit tricky, because you're not, you're, and it worked Whitney, it was halfway between Whitney and Oxford, you've got to get a second job, uh, but I did it, I got a pound a mile, uh, from my house as well, and I thought, ooh, I thought, I don't want a long day. I just want to potter around locally today and see. And I got a second job straight away, Oxford to Stevenage. And I thought, great, it's a good area. Again, pound a mile. So not going to complain. And picked it up and it was only a small box. It was nothing special. Uh, dropped it in Stevenage, industrial estate. Dropped it off, no aggro. And parked up in Stevenage thinking, I'm going to do all right here. I'll get a third job, and that'll be doing me. I'll go home. If I get anything to the Midlands from Stevenage, I'll be great. There was jobs to London. There was jobs. I, I wanted to get home. I didn't want to stay out that night. And I never got nothing. I never got knelt. The CX was playing up. Uh, I spoke to a couple of the three or four lads on the uh, couriers, and the CX was playing up as well. It was a pain in the ass actually, for two or three hours. I phoned up transport you get an automatic message they knew it was playing up they were trying the best you can't come i'm not going to complain it, it, it's got to happen i've been on here two and a half years it's only played up about probably three or four times all in and it was just not putting stuff through or it weren't giving you alerts quick enough you couldn't put prizes on jobs and i thought you know what i'll start trundling home and i'd only got 40 mile to go 46 mile cut across bedford up that way um yeah so i just drove home and I still got pretty good pence per mile that day, to be fair, because I'd done a pound a mile, over a pound a mile. So that was a quiet day. And I weren't that fussed, but it happens. You're not going to get a busy day every day. So that was Tuesday. I only did seven and a half hours. Wednesday, I got a job. This is, again, risk and reward, or risk taking risks. I got a job in Northampton to Norwich. I didn't have to pick up until nine o'clock. Uh, I got there in Northampton, it was on Dush Estate in Northampton, it was one drop to Norwich, it was on a pallet, the pallet was too tall for the van, but we split the pallet, uh, it was a courier who I've never worked for before, but they're local courier in Northampton, so that don't bother me, because if they don't pay, I ain't got far to go to get it, I haven't got to go 30 miles travelling to go and get some money, I've just got to go to Northampton, so it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, and nice bloke, and, he, and I said to him, 
I got there, the pallet was wrapped. I said to the bloke, well, the interest rate, I said, mate, it's never going to go on this van, but it will go on if we cut the pallet, split the pallet up. I put the boxes on. There were 16 boxes, big boxes. I said, I can stack them and they'll go on. And he was happy with that. He said, yeah, brilliant. So it should have been really a high top uh, van, but it would cost a lot more, I suppose. So anyway, got to Norwich, won it. No problem. And... I felt myself, this is going to be tricky getting out of Norwich this time of night. But at this time of day, and it was like getting near lunchtime now, and I thought, we could have problems here. I've had trouble getting out of Norwich before. I phoned a shipper in uh, Great Yarmouth I'd worked for the week before, and he said, if you ever come this way, give us a ring, and if I've got anything, I'll give you a ring. And he said, you know what, there's nothing, it's dead. And I went, right, okay. And I thought, hmm, it's going to be another rubbish day. But not. I pulled out where I delivered. Literally, they shared a yard. There was three or four companies. I pulled out of the yard once I delivered. 20, 30 metres out of the yard. Did my paperwork. And a job popped up. Norwich to Plymouth. 340 mile. I thought, I could stay out tonight. I've got no problem. Again, how much do you charge? I thought, looked around. There was about four drivers around Norwich. I quoted high quite high longer distance you ain't going to get a pound a mile longer distance but quoted pretty good rate i think it was about 80 p something like that rate i can't remember now but i phoned up well i looked on the where it was on the map and it said it was 0 0.1 miles away so i phoned up and i says hi oh, yes, i've just put a quote in on a job that you've put online i said i think i'm really close to you i says because i'm in this road and i says i wonder if the quote was any good and they went, it is, he says, it's just coming back. Uh, the um, Our drivers bring it back to the depot. And it, I told him where I was, and he went, mate, you're in the right yard. He said, we're in the same yard as where you've just delivered. He says, we're in the corner. He said, you'll see two of our vans parked there. And he went, and the van that was bringing this one parcel, like this back, was literally driving in the yard. So I'm just getting with someone's screen. Driving in the yard. And I was like, you couldn't make it up. I mean, literally, could be anywhere in Norwich. It's in the same yard. No dead miles there. And the box was small. It was a very small. Going to a hotel in Plymouth. ASAP. And we agreed price. And brilliant. So then Wednesday, I'm off to Plymouth. I've already come back from Plymouth. Well, let's go to Plymouth on Monday. I'm going back down there Wednesday. Talk about taking risks, because Plymouth, you can sit in Plymouth for two days. I'm sure you can and not get a job. You know, you might have to travel 70 miles to Truro or somewhere down Land's End to get a job. You, whatever, you could struggle. But we're off again. We're going to take another risk. But it didn't matter, because I got my week's money virtually. I virtually got, well, I had got my week's money by travelling to Plymouth. But I am 260 miles from home. So Thursday, I needed to get back. I got to Plymouth, I left Norwich at quarter past 12, half past 12, and I stopped a couple of times on the way down, fuel, had something to eat, um, stopped at services on the M3 at Fleet, put my bed together, because I knew I wouldn't get anything out of Plymouth at that time of night, I wasn't even interested, but there's some really good park for nights in Plymouth, and on the marina, and I've parked for night at one of them, and this was the other one I was going to try, because it's meant to be even better, right in the town centre, right in the centre of Plymouth. And the whole, I was taking it to a hotel. It was a part, a little part for computer system in a box. And I got there quarter to eight. Oh no, quarter to eight, quarter past, quarter past seven at night. And I put on it, I'd get there before eight. So I did it easy. And it was an easy drive down. It was just steady drive, not much traffic. And a really good day. A really good day. I did a 12 hour day, but I got good money for it. I got really good money. And when I added it up, I was over my weekly target, which is a grand in three days. Two massive days, one not so massive. But counting the Sunday, it was four days, over four days. Because I travelled to Sunday. But that was Wednesday done. <clears throat> I hadn't booked nothing in for Thursday. I didn't even look at the CX, to be honest. And Thursday come, uh, I had a cracky night, although it, was ra it rained a bit. There's a... You'll see park for night, and it's right on the marina, and it's free parking after 10pm at night. I got there about 
quarter past eight. Uh, I'd been and got some. I went and got some chips, sausage and chips, and I put a couple of quid in to cover me up till ten o'clock, and then it's free till eight in the morning. And there was about six, seven motorhomes. There was loads of fishermen. Even though it was dark, they were fishing the mackerel lines. And I walked. You walk literally two hundred yards, and you're in the cobbled streets, the old town. Great. The only problem was it was pissing down, so <laughs> that cut short. Really, the walking, much walking. Um, at a point, um, back to the van, sort of jogged back to the van, caught wet. And that was me done. That was um, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Thursday, I got up and I made sure I was out out, out the park by 8 o'clock. Because I was right on the hoe, Plymouth hoe, around the corner. I decided I was going to travel up to the uh, main road that goes just above Plymouth. Because it brings in other areas and I can shoot back down. But getting out of Plymouth at between 8 and 9, the traffic's horrendous. So I went up and I parked at a Tesco. The other side of the dual carriageway that goes past Plymouth, I think it's the A38. And I parked in the Tesco and I was there about 5 to 8. And oh, they shut. They didn't open till 8 o'clock. And I went and got a sandwich. I went and used the toilet. And now I'm waiting for a job. And it took... Well, I moved in the end. I moved to McDonald's to get a coffee. And I was about three and a half hours before I got a job. That's the risk of going somewhere. And there was about two drivers in the area. There's only one small small van driver and he was 20 mile away. And it took yeah, over three hours. And a job popped up to Bristol. Plymouth to Bristol. Uh, I quoted, all right, minute. I was going to quote I, but I thought, I just need to get out of here. <laughs> so I quoted, I still quoted above what my minimum, but I didn't quote my maximum. But I got the job, and that's all that's important. Getting to Bristol gives me more opportunity to get work, either home. I'd already decided that I was going to take the Friday off. I was going to get whatever I got up would be over my target. So I'm in bonus land. I was already decided I was going to take the Friday off. I was going to get some tyres for the van because three of them are really on the level, on the limit. And the fourth one's got a bit in it, so. But I wanted to get some decent tyres on, ready for winter. And I sat in Bristol. And when I delivered in Bristol, it was in the centre, right by the uh, river that runs through it. And the amount of drivers, oh my God. There must have been 30 green dots around Bristol. And I never got past 10, clicking at what size van they were. They were small vans. They were everywhere in Bristol. And I'm thinking, there were jobs, the odd job in Bristol. But I'm looking to come home to Northampton. And the jobs were back down to bloody Plymouth, one of them was. And one was to Newport. It weren't so, and they were going. They were going like that. I didn't want them anyway. I thought, you know what, I'm going to start driving towards home. This is going to be a crap day. That's all I could think. It's going to be a crap day. Because I've just done money up to Bristol. And I've got 125 mile drive home. And... Do I want to stay out another night? Probably not. I would have, I suppose. I thought I'll drive up to Lee Delamere Services, which is on the M4, near getting on the way to Swindon. And I parked in. I went in there. A bit despondent, actually, because I should have had a good, a better day, really, I think. If I could have got out of Plymouth. You know, you just feel like, oh, I can't, I'm not patient. People say I'm not a patient bloke. And look happened. I was... 10, 15 miles short of Swindon and a job popped up Swindon to two pickups going to Banbury I've worked for this uh, career before I won't say what company but it's Neil who runs it and I, I've worked for him a fair few times and I thought Do you know what I'll quote money if I get it at least that gets me to Banbury Banbury's 30 miles from home and I quoted I thought that might save a bit of the day and he phoned me up straight away he said Dave I'll send it over to you brilliant Cheers for that. And there was another job on there from Swindon to Banbury. And it was the same, Neil, but it was different. I thought, obviously, it's got to be done like this. So I went and picked the first job, first uh, item up. Easy enough. And I went to, it, the other one was at Hospital, Great Western. Picking the second one up. And I've done hospitals for Neil loads of times. I went to go and get it. And they couldn't find it. I've got the code. I've looked. And I'll give the guys do. There was two guys looking there, you know, and we couldn't find it. Just couldn't find it. Phone Neil up, and he'd already phoned me to say, 
how are you getting on? I says, well, I'm in the hospital, but they can't find this, Neil. Uh, and they've told me to, it, just to go because they can't find it. I said, we have looked. And he went, can you do this other one for me? He says, but you've got to be there before half four. And I went, okay. I says, let me get out of the hospital then. So we, we're scrapping this one because we can't find it. I said, I've got the names. I took the names of the people who said, just go because we can't find it. And they were both, they worked with a supply chain inside the hospital for the theatres. So I, I took a photo of their lanyards and their names. I says, guys, I'll take your photo of your lanyards. Then I'm covered because you've agreed that it's not here. That's what happened. So I've raced in, got to the van, found the van. It's a huge hospital, the Great Western in uh, Swindon. Found the van, jumped in it. And it said I was going to get there at 28 minutes past four for the next one. I hadn't even said anything to that. I said, to, yep, I'll do it. He gave me the postcode. I got there, 28 minutes past, picked a box, two boxes up that had got to go the same place as what I'd picked up from. Neil's over the moon because they were going up as four. They were happy that I'd got there because they were going to get the right ump, I think. And Neil paid me the money for that job that he got on it. So I did really well in the end on that day. I did well. I did really well. I did really well. That got me my money out and that got all the dead mileage out of the way, really. A lot of dead mileage. He paid me. I got good money on the first one and he put that one on it. It gave me a good money. I went to Banbury. I know I've been to this place a dozen times. Dropped it off. Easy signatures and drive home. And that was it. That was uh, Thursday done. Oh, good lady's come home. She's soaking wet. So I'm just doing my video. You're all right. Don't worry. <laughs> just finishing. And that was it. That was my week. Finished. Um, yeah, ended up being a good week. Really good week. And today's Friday. I've just put four tyres on the van, which are absolutely brilliant. Uh, really good. Made a hell of a difference. So all in all, a good week. Now we're looking for work for Monday. Weekend off and it's chucking it down the rain. I think my wife's a bit wet as well. She's just come in. And going to sort some dinner out. Hope you guys are doing all right. Speak soon. Yeah.